what's going on guys today I'm gonna to be doing some creek fishing for creek chubs and I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how to catch them where to catch them the right bait to use and all of that stuff Now you might be wondering why would you want to go fishing for creek chubs well the bigger ones the jumbo ones are actually a lot of fun to catch and this creek I'm going fishing in actually has some decent sized chubs in it and secondly they make awesome live bait for catfish uh, northern pike walleye bass and other types of fish and from what I've been told they're actually delicious to eat I've never eaten chub before but I definitely am interested in trying it I saw some recipes where you can uh, deep fry them pan fry them like you would pan fish and the meat is supposed to be really good so um, maybe I'll do like a catch and cook in a future video or something like that but uh, anyways let's get down to the fishing all right, so I'm using worms today. They work really good for chubs and catfish. I mean, you can have a chance of catching something else too, but if you want to catch creek chubs, you want to catch them fast, they love worms. So I just use a uh, slip bobber setup, inexpensive uh, styrofoam slip bobber from Walmart. You don't need anything fancy. Put a bobber stop above it, split shot sinker. You could even fish without a sinker, even just a hook. Uh, would be fine. I like to use sinkers uh, in case there's a catfish or something. I like to keep the bait on the bottom and there's a little bit of current here too so that that does help with the current. But that's my rig real simple. Slip bobber rigs are awesome. It's one of my favorite ways to fish in rivers and creeks. And when you're uh, doing creek fishing for chubs or really other types of fish you just want to find where the holes are. So here you can see the water is really shallow. It's really nice sandy gravelly bottom and over here it kind of drops off a little bit and there's some shade over on the other bank and that's typically where you're going to find the chubs, catfish, panfish, smallmouth, you know other types of fish too. So I'm going to cast into there and see if we can catch some big ones. And tip number two when you're fishing for creek chubs is you want to go in the afternoon. They're more active in the afternoon, at least the adults are. Um, so if you want, want to catch the bigger ones, you have a much better chance of going in the afternoon than you would if you went fishing in the morning. I'll see if anybody's home. Right away. Oh, that's a bluegill. Or sunfish. Got those pretty colors on them. Still got the worm. Nope, I'm snagged. Well, that's no good. Hung up on something. I don't know how deep it is over here. Oh, no, I'm not. The fish had me hung up. That's another sunfish. I'm just using a medium light rod. I mean, if all you're going to be doing is fishing mostly for like smaller fish, chubs, panfish, you could use a smaller rod. I think this one's six, nine, seven foot. Medium light. There are smallmouth and 
bigger fish in here, so I, I do like to have a, a little bigger of a rod just in case I hook into something. I want to have a little more backbone if I you know, hook into a channel cat or a big bass or something like that. Oh, it's a rock bass. So far, we're not catching any chubs, but hey, whatever. Fish is a fish. So baby rock bass. There's a chub. That's yeah, the first one. Let's get situated here. You can see they got that lateral line on them. And the way you can tell it's a creek chub is they got that spot, they got that dark spot on their dorsal fin. Right there you can see it. It's right up, right up in the top. Got that, that little black dot. This is a little one. I've caught some big ones out of here. There's some jumbo ones in here. I'm hoping to hook into one of those. There could be some more fish in there. Another sunfish. right at the opening of that creek over there. There's one. It's a little guy. They kind of make some weird noises I noticed too. They kind of similar kind of similar to a cat catfish. They kind of croak sometimes. Now they'll hit on a minnow too. I've caught chubs on minnows. Um, but in my experience, they like worms more than minnows. I'm using six pound test, but you could get away with two pound, four pound. I like to have, you know, a six to eight pound test just in case, you know, you hook into a bass or a pike or something bigger. There's a nice little whirlpool back in there. There's one. 
Well, that's a bigger one. That's, that's the biggest one so far. But I caught one out of here before that was twice the size of this one. Whoops. Here he is, little creek chub. They're aggressive. I mean, as soon as the, as soon as the worm hits the water, they're just on it right away. Definitely am interested in bringing a few home sometime and, and deep frying them just to test it out and see how the meat tastes. If anybody watching this has ever eaten creek chub, leave a comment below with a recipe or if you, you know the meat is any good, is it worth doing it, is it nasty? I like using slip bobbers because it gives you a little more control with the depth. And I just like, I like watching the bobber go down. There's another chub. That's a decent sized one. I want to get the jumbo ones. Oh, there's a sunfish. I gotta take it off before it, before I lose the uh, worm. I just love those colors. Little chubby. Now I noticed here along the bank, there are thousands of minnows schooled up everywhere. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come back here with a minnow trap and trap some of these minnows and uh, get some free bait. Because I can see, I mean, it's hard to see now because it's kind of shady, but when I first walked up over there, you could kind of see with the sun shining on it, and there was th literally thousands of minnows swarming in that vegetation. So I'm pretty confident you throw a minnow trap down in there and it's gonna be full when I come back the next day. So I, I definitely might try that. Maybe I'll do a video So this spot I like because you got an island here in the middle. You got water on both sides coming around, nice current opening up. It's probably a nice deep hole in the middle. I did take a few casts in there and I didn't, I didn't catch anything, but I'm gonna try it over here. It's got that nice current coming down there and then you got some slack water right in front of it. Right away, right away I had a bite. Here's a chub. 
It's a beast. Whoop. There he goes. Here's another one. No jumbo ones. I mean, the ones I caught earlier were decent size. I let them go. You can see how sandy the bottom is. All right, so this area, I like it because you can see on the other side, there's a nice uh, shaded area and it's actually deeper on the other side as well. So there's probably fish in there. And maybe something else other than a chub too, but I'm happy catching anything. I don't care. It's better than getting skunked, not catching anything at all. Let's see if anybody's home. down in there. Whoop, I don't want to get hung up. There's a branch or something in the water over there. I'm actually going to move over here because there's definitely fish in there. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at this one. Look at that. Now, that is a shiner, isn't it? Someone leave a comment. That's a shiner. Is that a golden shiner? I'm pretty sure that's a golden shiner. It's got pretty uh, colors on the, on the fins on the bottom. See, like, Pretty orange colors there. And it's got bumps all over the head. But I'm pretty sure that it's a that's a golden shiner. Oop, he's gone. I'm gonna actually set this bobber stop a little bit deeper. So if you're fishing in uh, creeks and rivers, slip bobber setups are awesome. The only thing that's annoying about using a slip bobber rig is that sometimes, like, this one is already starting to come loose. The string, you know, after you use it a number of times, it starts to slide up and down the line a lot easier. When you first put it on, it's really tight, but it kind of loosens up. So that's the one thing that you can buy the plastic ones, and the plastic ones tend to do the same thing, too. Um, I always just use the string ones. Ooh, that's a jumbo there. That is a jumbo, guys. Look at that guy. Big old jumbo creek chub. Look at that. There he is. You're an aggressive little fish. He slammed the uh, worm. Bobber was gone.
another chub, not as big as the other one. I think I need to set this a little bit deeper. The thing with these chubs is that they are uh, bottom feeders for the most part. It's best to keep your bait closer to the bottom. And they don't seem to go in shallow water as much. They like, they like these deeper holes, like many fish. Ooh, what's this, guys? Is that another, uh... look at that. I've never caught one of these before. Here, but what is that, guys? Oh, I caught it. You see, it's got the, uh, it's got that red mark right there, right by the eye. It's on both sides, it's not blood. And the bumps on the head is that it's a different type of chub. That's not a uh, it's not a shiner, I don't believe. To me, that looks like a chub, but it's a different type of chub for sure. I mean, it's got that cool mark on it. Whoop! But. Definitely uh, interesting. And yeah, we're gonna let him go. Try it closer to the bank. There we go. That's the sweet spot right there. Oh, sunfish. Roll back, right back in there, close to the bank. Oh yeah. There's one. You can see if you got a bunch of these, and bring them out in the boat or somewhere else for um, northern or for flathead. It's like candy for catfish. Fix my worm here a little bit. Something. A little sunfish. It's got those beautiful colors on them. Looks like a tropical fish. Pools are always good spots anytime you're doing any creek fishing. Always cast into whirlpools. Because usually fish will they'll sit right on the edge of the current, waiting to, you know, amb ambush bugs that fall into the water, or whatever. Bass like to hide in there. Another chub. Feisty little guys.
yeah, I'm going to take a few more casts into there. That's Whirlpool is good. And then I'll try that one over there. As you can see, the water kind of comes down and there's a little drop off right there. And right over there. Ooh, there we go. What is it, guys? Surprise, surprise. That's a decent sized chub. I'll let him go. You guys have other baits that you like to use for chubs anyone watching this leave a comment if you have something you like better than uh, using worms of course you can catch them in minnow nets too or you know uh, cast nets or like the metal uh, funnel traps minnow traps this is too shallow that's the problem the stop actually loosened up a little bit on the line so you gotta tie another one on There we go. Still got my worm. I'll cast now that I've fixed the bobber stop. I'll cast that right back into there. That's the keys. You got to get it. You got to get it on the bottom. There's one. So what I am going to do is I'm going to move downstream actually and check out a couple other spots. Something small, just pecking at it. Another sunfish? Or, uh, yep. green sunfish. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Uh, if you're thinking about maybe going out and doing some creek fishing, maybe you want to try something different and try to uh, hook into uh, some creek chubs, maybe for live bait or maybe bring them home and try to eat them, which actually I wouldn't mind doing. I might do that in a future video. Is that Like I said in the beginning of the video, they are supposed to be delicious. Um, but uh, didn't catch any of the big jumbo ones I caught last time I was here, but still caught some decent sized ones and they are still a lot of fun to catch. Plus caught some sunfish. So uh, I'm definitely gonna come back to this place again, probably with some minnows. Uh, might even try like a Ned rig here or something. So there are smallmouth and, and stuff. And I don't know if in this stretch, but uh, they are in this river and other types of fish. So I'm um, definitely gonna come back here again and, and try some other baits. And uh, just an awesome day to be in the water. It's just, the water's so warm and it just feels great when it's hot like this. So. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.